and go back to the cosmic battle, if you will, between God and the kingdom of darkness. Now, I don't want to suggest that there's any, there's any uh, questionableness to the outcome, any uncertainty about the outcome. But there is a war. The war is not just the things that we see. There is an unseen battle. There is an unseen warfare that is going on. And when Adam and Eve sinned, they just didn't cut themselves off from God. And they, they turned over this world system to a kingdom of wicked spirits who are at war with God. You wonder why the world is in the condition it's in. We know we quote so often the scripture, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this world. There is a, there's an unseen kingdom that rules over what we call this world system. And we don't see it, but it's there and it's real. But God was in the process of bringing an answer and, and setting forth a hope for people that would turn their hearts to him and turn from their sins. That's why he called Abraham. That's why he promised him that one day in your seed, all the nations of the world will be blessed. And because that promise is being fulfilled, has been and is being fulfilled, you and I are here this morning. We have a reason to have hope, to rejoice in our God. Because that's, that's part of what this was all about. Joshua didn't see, he was, he was buried in the moment, just like we would be, just like we are. Very, way too much buried in the moment. But God had, God had made the promises in spite of the condition of the people. He was faithful to his promises. He was bringing them in and establishing a relationship with the people and a, and a temporary covenant. Great promises to what was coming in the future. And one day, the Son of God came. And he walked among men, but he didn't come here just to be a, a great teacher and miracle worker and make people say, wow, he came to give his life, didn't he? So much of what we sang this morning was about that. In fact, one of the lines in one of the songs talked about angels coming and ministering to him. While he was in that garden wrestling in prayer, there were angels of God that were, that were strengthening him. Boy, would it have been something to be able to see the whole picture, not just the earthly physical stuff that happened at the cross, but I mean the, the warfare in the heavenlies. Yes. To see the demons just screaming with joy and, 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 and a false sense of triumph in what they were accomplishing there. And yet the angels of God engaged in the battle, knowing that the victory, the eternal victory was about to be won there. Oh, this was, this was not just some earthly thing. And, he, and that's what we're involved in now. You see, you see the picture. This same commander is pictured several places in the, in the scriptures, going riding forth with the what? Armies of heaven. You look at Revelation chapter 19 sometime and just read toward the end of that, and you will see that, that exact picture in symbolic language. A rider on a white horse called the Word of God with, with a sword coming out of his mouth. Now, I'll tell you, the word of God has gone forth into the earth, and, and how people respond to that word is determining destinies. There are people who say no to that word, and they're turned over, and they become nothing but devil's food. The birds of the air come, and they eat. But that same word is setting a people free, and it's calling them to a Savior. Praise God. You see, what's, in the big picture, what God has done is commanded his son to build a kingdom and given him the authority to do it. He is worthy of all of it because of what he did on the cross. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power and might and dominion and all those things that we read in, in Revelation earlier. And he has ridden forth. And I'll tell you what, he's here this morning. We're not just a group of people. There's another dimension that we live in. And I, you know, the, the first thought, that, I mean, the first central thought that it's, has gripped my mind this morning is this word, neither. God does not need our cleverness. He does not need our traditions. He does not need our ideas. He does not need, he doesn't need us, but he wants us. He loves us. But just like Joshua faced that battle that day, 
He needed to understand his position in the big picture. I mean, I'm sure the weight of responsibility fell upon him at this point. The Lord had told him, don't be scared, don't be, you know, be courageous, all of that. Knowing that he would, knowing that he'd fight those battles. But until this moment, I have every idea that he was fighting off some fear. He knows, yeah, God's told me to do this, but here I am. There's the walls. What am I going to do? And he's just gripped with a sense of responsibility, feeling like, almost like he's the top dog. I'm, he's the one that all falls on his shoulders. All of a sudden, he finds out he's not, nothing more than a buck private in God's army. And the general shows up. The general shows up. Oh, praise God. You know, sometimes we can talk about the warfare that we're in and the world we live in and the, the powers of darkness and demons and we don't know, you know, a lot of stuff we don't know about, about some of that. And you might, you know, it's awfully easy to feel very small, very intimidated, very uncertain, very, uh, this is a pretty, pretty dire situation we find ourselves in. I know God's promised to be with us, but, you know, and we try to plan and scheme and, and we're fear, we, we've got a lot of fears we deal with. They were just like us. They were just like us. But the Lord wanted them to understand. I don't need your plans. I'm here. What, what you're part of is not something where you've got to scheme your way. This is not Jacob trying to figure his way through life. This is Israel. After God touched his heart and changed him. This is a situation where you just need to recognize that I'm here. This is a cosmic war. This is, a, this is something, this is a conflict between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And you are part of it at this point, but your part is not to figure your way through. Your part is to come to me. Your part is to look to me and believe in me and trust in me. I will tell you what to do. I will go with you. Your, when you go out with your earthly armies, you are not going out alone. There is a heavenly army that is going with you. Not only that, I'm going, to, I'm, going to make those, I'm going to take care of those walls. You're not going to have to do anything to, about those walls. I'm going to take care of the walls. Does that sound encouraging to you? Anybody got any walls in your life right now? Yeah. Thank God. If we could really see as, as we ought to see it, I, I just pray that God will reveal it. Now, you know, Joshua was allowed to see physically a man with a sword. But, we, you know, I, we, have, we have to see just as surely. And I believe God can open it up to the heart of someone whose heart is open to him. To where we can find our place in the grand scheme of things. You know, we don't need to feel all important. We don't need to feel so intimidated and defeated that we're just, well, all is lost. We've got the commander of the army of the Lord who walks and who leads the armies of heaven on behalf, not of our plans and schemes, but of his eternal purpose. And he has called us to turn from our plans and schemes and to seek his eternal purpose. And so, you know, you could almost imagine that Joshua had maybe conceived some plans and but I'll tell you what, when he got to this point, he did not say, well, Lord, here's my plan. What do you think of it? 